Hey guys, today I'll be talking about state space decomposition and reinforcement learning, which is a new reinforcement learning approach we have developed as a part of my final year project. To give some context, reinforcement learning, or RL for short, is a type of machine learning where an agent learns by interacting with an environment. And as the agent explores the environment by taking certain actions, it receives rewards and gradually learns what actions are good to take in each state. Unlike other machine learning techniques, it doesn't need a labeled data set as it learns from experience. The RL training loop looks something similar to this. Firstly, our agent explores the environment and observes the reward it receives. We often store our experience in the form of a transition, which is a tuple containing our current state, the action we take, our state after taking the action, and the reward we receive. And next, we use our experience to improve our estimate of the environment's Q value function. And the q-value function represents the expected return the agent receives given its current state and action. So it's able to tell us the value of um, taking an action in a specific state, which helps us make smarter decisions. We then repeat these three steps and gradually converge to the true q-value function, which gives us the optimal policy. And there are various ways we can update our estimate of the q-value function. If we have discrete state and actions, um, there's an there are iterative tabular methods which help us do this. However, many larger problems have a continuous state space. For example, our state could include um, GPS coordinates. And in this case, it's really common to utilize deep reinforcement learning to solve the problem. In deep reinforcement learning, we utilize an artificial neural network to approximate our Q-value function. And the method we develop in our project is a form of deep reinforcement learning as we want it to cater to larger real-life problems where having a continuous state or action space is very common. So let's take a look at a real-life example. There has been past research on using RL to control software-defined network controllers, also known as SDN controllers. And the goal of these controllers is to strategically control network traffic in the most efficient way. There are countless ways to route network traffic, so the action space of this problem is large. In addition, there are also endless configurations our network can be in at any point in time, meaning that the state space of our environment is also very big. And due to the curse of dimensionality, this causes exponentially long training times, which heavily limits the practicality of using RL for these real-life problems. Some refer to this as a state space explosion problem. In addition, Due to the sizes of SDNs, nodes are often stored on different machines, meaning that a lot of the routing data is stored in a distributed manner. Therefore, in order for our agent to explore this environment, it would need to gather data from multiple destinations. And this poses some problems. Firstly, there is a heavy communication cost when transferring all our data to a centralized location. And secondly, there are also privacy risks when we move a lot of data around. Therefore, we are not only limited by excessive training times due to the state space explosion problem, but we are also limited by the lack of data locality. And in our project, we address these two important problems and develop a new deep reinforcement learning method called state space decomposition reinforcement learning. And we'll be referring to our method as SSDRL for short. And our key idea is to split up an RL problem into several smaller ones by decomposing the state space of our environment. So rather than training one large centralized neural network, we can split up training into multiple smaller ones. And this allows us to parallelize our learning in a distributed system, as well as speed up training as smaller neural networks take less time to train. Going back to our SDN example, each node may be associated with a specific subnetwork, as shown in this diagram. This means that most of our interactions occur within each subnetwork instead of between the different subnetworks. And in this case, the question would be if we could train on each subnetwork separately and combine these learned subproblems to solve the overarching problem. We chose to investigate state space decomposition um, because like our SCN controller environment, there are many other large environments which exhibit sparse regions of interaction in their state space. And to our knowledge, there's currently no other methods which exploit this property in order to speed up training. So now let's dive into our new approach. We define state space decomposition as a method to split up a state space into disjoint regions. And we can visualize this concept by observing the transition probability matrix of an RL problem. 
and this matrix models the dynamics of our environment and contains the probabilities of transitioning from one state to another. And when this matrix is sparse, we can set some of these transition probabilities to zero if it's less than a certain threshold epsilon. And when we normalize the resulting submatrices, we end up with multiple independent smaller RL problems, which can be learned on separate neural networks. However, since we set some of these prob probabilities to zero, um, we sacrifice accuracy in our learning as we have removed important information that could be vital to our uh, optimal solution. Therefore, we can introduce an additional combining neural network which learns from transitions that take us between the different state subspaces. This diagram shows our final network architecture of SSCRL after conducting numerous experiments. So we have subspace neural networks which are responsible for learning the q-value function for each of our state subspaces. And then we have the combining neural network which uses our learned subproblems to solve the overarching problem by taking into account inter-subspace experiences. There are many challenges we face whilst implementing this. Firstly, we needed to experiment with different ways of training the network. We could train all the networks together or separately and achieving convergence to the optimal policy was also very important. Our method needed to be able to glue all of the subproblems together to form an overarching solution. And in the case where our state subspaces weren't as disjoint, this was a challenging task. However, through many trials, we developed an effective two-stage training algorithm for SSDRL. So stage one of training aims to learn the optimal policies within each state subspace. So for k number of state subspaces, we train k neural networks at the same time, each learning from transitions in their respective subspaces. And the combining neural network is not trained or used at this point. After a set number of episodes, which can be adjusted by the programmer, we transition into stage two of training. And the aim of this stage is to combine our learned subproblems to form a global optimal solution for the full environment. And we do this by refining our learned Q values from stage one by taking into account inter-subspace transitions. At each step in an episode, we train on both within subspace transitions and inter-subspace transitions. However, now we only update the weights of the combining neural network and the subspace network weights are frozen. So how does SSDRL actually solve the two problems we introduced in our motivation? Firstly, SSDRL is able to speed up learning a lot as we train on smaller neural networks which operate in a lower dimension. This helps us alleviate the effects of the state space explosion problem. Secondly, we are able to carry out deep reinforcement learning in a distributed system as we split up our training into multiple disjoint neural networks. This way, the training for each subspace network can be carried out on separate machines, and there's no need to gather training data at a centralized location. In stage two of training, SSDRL only requires the global transfer of learned information, such as each, each subspace network's weights or their direct outputs. And this significantly reduces the strain on communication bandwidth and ensures that no sensitive training data risks being leaked. Next, we will be looking at how SSDRL's performance compares to another state-of-the-art RL method. So initially, we tested our new method on grid world environments. And as we aim to decompose the state space into several disjoint ones, we wanted an environment where we could easily define different subspaces and where there were very little interaction between them. So we created this maze environment with two rooms. And the goal of this task is to cross to the other room and reach the goal. We define two state subspaces for this environment, one which contains the position coordinates of the initial room and the second one containing the position coordinates of the second room. Since there is only a small opening gate leading into the second room, there's a small probability that the agent will cross state subspaces. We evaluated SSDRL with a deep reinforcement learning technique called DeepQ learning. And DeepQ learning was created by DeepMind and showed state-of-the-art results for learning various computer games. It was also proven to be a method which was applicable to many different problems, so we chose to use this for comparison. And this graph shows the reward curve of our agents in the grid world experiment. They show the total amount of reward our agent receives in each episode of training. And we can see that SSDRL clearly converges to the optimal solution faster than deep key learning. 
we managed to achieve around a 60% reduction in the number of training episodes needed. As we wanted our approach to be used in real-life applications, we investigated its performance using a real-life data set in order to validate our new approach. We created a workload distribution environment involving two data centers with five machines each. The CPU metrics of these machines are modeled by Alibaba's cluster trace data set. And in this environment, the RL agent aims to learn how to distribute incoming workload to the data centers in a way that is feasible and least costly. We specifically created two data centers so that we could apply state space decomposition easily. So if requests arrive at the first data center, this will be considered as a transition in the first state subspace. Whereas if requests arrive at the second data center, transitions, those transitions are in subspace two. And at each time step, workload arrives at one data center, and the agent is responsible to e for either allocating it to a computer in the local data center or sending it over to a computer in the remote data center for service. And the reward system is designed to consider how much of the workload we were able to serve and the cost of the communication channel if we choose to use it. We compared our performance against DQ learning in the workload distribution environment. And the left curve here compares the return per episode and the greedy policy curve compares the return the agent receives when executing the best possible policy according to the neural network at that specific training episode. And we can observe that SSCRL outperforms deep Q learning in both curves. curves. It's able to reach a high return much earlier on in training, and its greedy policy learns steadily and maintains a higher return than deep Q learnings throughout training. The performance gain here is actually much more significant than the gain we achieve with our grid world environments, as we manage to converge seven times faster than deep Q learning. In summary, we have developed SSDRL, a new deep reinforcement learning method which utilizes state space decomposition to accelerate and distribute training. We applied our method to several environments, including one based off a real life data set. And in our evaluation against deep Q learning, we found that SSDRL converged to the optimal solution much faster. This was a brief overview of our method, but further evaluation of our performance can be found in our report. Thank you so much for listening.